Turns out that the neighbors were never yelling at him. In fact, they were never there. Brian was schizophrenic and was hearing voices in his head. He had to go to a mental hospital for a month. What interesting, wholesome, or NSFW story have you been dying to tell, but nobody on Ascredit ever asks the right question? Hey viewer, welcome aboard, and thanks for coming to another Alien Radio Storytime. I'm Andrew, and I'll be your narrator for today. Make sure to not miss any more storytimes with me by liking the video, subscribing, and ringing the bell button. If you don't, I'll tell everyone you have a small pp. Alright let's get to business and start these stories. I was watching porn and masturbating one day. Forgot the window cleaner was coming and had the curtains open. When I noticed I jumped up and pulled them so hard it pulled the rail off. Then I had to go and pay the man. I see him around town now and then. One hot summer morning, I woke up to extreme heat and a feeling of wetness. I look to my right, and in my half-awake gaze I see what I recognized as these piglets. I was confused and started shouting in panic. Only then do I realize that my chihuahua had given birth. Quite a day. My grandma's mom died when she was little. Not long afterward, their priest walked by the house while her dad was gardening. The priest basically told her dad, she died because you don't send your kids to mass often enough. My great granddad sprayed the priest with the garden hose, and that's how our family became Protestant. I guess this is wholesome. One time I was having sex with my GF in the kitchen of her parents' house and when I pulled out. I spunked all over her dad's favorite thermos on the counter. I really liked her dad, he was a good guy. I couldn't stand the thought of him drinking out of a cup I came all over. So I took the thermos and made up a story about how I borrowed and lost it. Then I got him a really nice stainless steel one. In first grade my friend and I made a game we called Slingshot, which basically involved throwing each other down the small hill on the schoolyard. So one time I put a little extra stank on my throw. He flew down the hill and landed funny, screamed in pain and immediately started crying. He went home early, and it turned out that his collarbone exploded like a cheap firecracker. It never healed properly, and he had arm and shoulder issues through high school. I know he never blamed me for it, because I brought it up regularly and apologized profusely, but I still feel awful about it to this day, nearly 30 years later. I met and slept with a girl while away overseas. We had a good time for a day or two. Then both headed home never expecting to meet again. Fast forward a couple of weeks and she invited me to visit her in America. At the time I'm pretty poor and from Australia, so it's an expensive trip. She hears this doesn't flinch and tells me not to worry about money. At this point I was pretty cautious but curious, so I ended up going. Spent a couple of days with her in law before her family proceeded to invite me to travel Europe with them. Off I went. It ended up being the trip of a lifetime but didn't work out with the girl. Edit. At one stage I found out her dad have been in jail for murder, which definitely made the situation difficult. One of my best friends is on disability and is home pretty much 24-7. Because he's on disability he tends to live in some crappy apartments. One day someone knocks on the door and he answers it half asleep to this nervous looking guy in a hoodie. The guy immediately hands out a packet and my friend groggily takes it in his hands. Suddenly the guy goes white as a sheet. My friend glances down and notices he's holding a package of some kinda white powder. The guy snatches it back and runs. It was obviously meant for the dealer who lived upstairs. My dad kept a journal every day from the day my sister way born two years older than me until I was around 15. Most of the time it was just the facts of what everyone did that day and what the weather was. I remember him setting us down in the home office every so often to rehash what we each had done in the previous days, if he hadn't had time to type up entries the few days before. I never really thought much of it at the time, but now that I'm in my mid-twenties and have a printed copy of the full journal, I now see the full value of it. I can turn to any random date and know exactly what we did. It is full of so many things I didn't remember, and also with things I didn't realize was going on. There are several times I'm dad references money issues that I wasn't aware of. It's sometimes sad to read how excited he was about several get-rich-quick schemes and knowing how it didn't pan out for him. 
It's also filled with so many funny little stories too. One of my favorites is when I was around 3 or 4 and I was saying a prayer before dinner and I prayed, thanks for nothing, and my parents told me I was under no circumstances ever allowed to pray that prayer again. I don't think my dad realized at the time how special it would be to have those journals so many years later, but I truly wouldn't trade them for anything. I'm fairly certain that a guardian trucker kept me from being robbed, and who knows what in the middle of nowhere a few years ago. I used to haul race cars to the tracks for races, usually just one or two cars in a smaller trailer. I had stopped for fuel late at night and noticed a Mustang following me after leaving. I dropped well below the speed limit multiple times to see if he'd pass, but he was always slow and stayed behind me. At this point it was probably about 230 and on an empty highway getting into pretty remote territory. I pulled off at the next truck stop, and he did as well. He just waited for me to leave and got behind me again. At this point I had 911 pre-dialed. And I was starting to get pretty nervous. About this time, we catch up to a truck just chugging along. I ass and get in front of him, but the Mustang starts trying to wedge in. After a few minutes, the truck has fallen back to just dim lights in the rear view. Suddenly the Mustang gets beside me and starts driving aggressively, getting in front of me and cutting over, basically trying to get me to stop or run off the road. Suddenly this trucker reappears, right behind the Mustang. Gets inches from the rear bumper, starts blaring his horns. And stayed that way until he had pushed this guy a good quarter mile ahead of me. I slowed down and didn't see either again. At the time I had about $500,000 worth of race cars and such in my trailer. I was sure I was about to be found dead in a ditch with an empty trailer. So thank you Guardian Trucker, wherever you may be. So, I teach academic writing in English at a university overseas. I set students up on Google Drive, so I can jump in and give advice on their writing whenever I can. The students also have a textbook, and sometimes they will complete an exercise in it and take a photo and upload it for me to check. One day, the class is in the computer room doing data analysis for research papers. I have been using the projector to explain stats tests or something, and the students were now working independently. I had a little free time, so I went into some of the folders the students had shared with me to see if I could give them some advice. One girl had an image file in the folder, labeled weirdly licklicklick.jpg. Not really thinking, I opened it up to see what it was. It was a dick pic, obviously sent via messenger. I quickly closed it down and decided to ignore it. It was obviously a mistake, they knew I checked those folders, and I assumed they would see it and delete it ASAP. It was then that I turned around and saw that the projector was still on. If anyone had been looking up, they would have seen me open a dick pic and close it again. Luckily, A, the room was bright so the projector wasn't so clear, and B, all of the students were looking at their own screens. So that's the day I almost lost my job. When I was 17, I worked at a grocery store with a guy named Brian. Normal guy, mid-twenties, lil chub. Didn't really think much of him. One day he tells me about how he lives in an apartment by himself and that his neighbors are absolutely crazy. Like they would yell at him to be quiet, pound against the wall to get him to shut up, even though he wouldn't be doing anything. He would sneeze, and his neighbors would scream at the top of their lungs from next door. It was that bad. TBH, I didn't really care much when he was telling me this. I just wanted to go home and not work anymore. Couple days went by and I noticed that Brian wasn't showing up anymore. Whatever. Didn't think much of that either. A month or two goes by and he finally shows back up to work. So, being the nice friend I am, I asked him where he's been. He tells me he was actually fired because he was in the hospital. I didn't think that was a valid reason to fire someone, but what do I know? I didn't comment on that. I asked him why he was in the hospital, and he told me it was for personal reasons. I told him it was good having him back, and carried on with my day. Fast forward a couple days to me talking to another coworker who was good friends with Brian. He says, did you hear what happened to Brian? Yeah he was in the hospital and was fired or something. Do you know why though? No, he said it was personal. So this is what happened a couple months ago before Brian disappeared. He was at home by himself when his neighbors, surprise, started yelling at him through the walls for being too loud. 
Brian telling himself I've had enough decides to call the police and have them deal with it. The police arrived and started talking to the neighbors for quite some time. Hours go by with the police and neighbors. So he calls the police again to ask what's taking so long. The police respond with, dot dot um. We left like an hour and a half ago. Turns out that the neighbors were never yelling at him. In fact, they were never there. Brian was schizophrenic and was hearing voices in his head. He had to go to a mental hospital for a month. Like and subscribe for more funny, interesting, and scary r slash ask reddit videos.